It's like, oh my gosh, with the pearl clutching, please. If only Lauren would take her own advice. Hello, and welcome to, or back to, my channel. I'm Kit, and today, Lauren Chen is being Lauren Chen. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Lauren, and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content she puts out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video, and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below, along with sources and resources. And now, on to the reason we're all here. J.D. Vance, Trump's VP for the 2024 presidential election, made some comments in 2021 about how miserable childless cat ladies are running the country, which apparently got a lot of people up in arms when that video was discovered. And Christian conservative YouTuber Lauren Chen has decided to defend J.D. and in doing so, well, she's all over the place. But as a childless cat lady, I felt obligated to discuss this. And first, I think we'll look at the clip itself. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. I do appreciate that the Democratic Party apparently consists of three people, one of which has kids and one of which has stepkids. As for my feelings about the clip in general, meh. I'm not surprised to hear this from JD, and when your whole thing is that marriage and motherhood are the pinnacle of womanhood, of course you're going to say that women who don't follow that path are miserable. But Lauren's defense seems to be that we just don't understand what JD meant. Okay, so first thing here is that as people who speak English and who have, you know, some kind of comprehension ability, it's pretty clear that when J.D. Vance mentions women who are childless and miserable due to the choices that they have made, he is referring to women who do not have children by choice, i.e. he is not referring to women who have struggled with things like infertility. He's not referring to women who are looking for a husband but haven't found one. No, he is specifically referring to women who are childless by choice and who resent their own choices. Okay, well, maybe these women should be more focused on listening than being offended because they would know that J.D. Vance is not talking about them if they've had infertility issues. Why is this so hard? And even, you know, I think already from the included comments, it's clear that he was talking about women who are childless by choice, but let's read this because it's further clarification. On Monday, the influential anti-Trump commentator, Ron Filipkowski, posted part of that interview on X where it took off. That clip didn't include the caveats Vance had shared with ISI that he wasn't talking about people who, quote, even though they would like to have kids, are unable to have them. So like, no, if you're a woman who wants kids, you're trying to have them, JD Vance is not talking about you. Like, obviously no one thinks that the woman who tries to have a kid who wants children but is unable to do so is in any way the same type of creature as the leftist girl boss who actively chooses to not have kids because they might get in the way of her career or because she'll have less time to travel or whatever it is. It's not the same. No one thinks it's the same. Look, chicas, okay, if you are so offended by J.D. Vance's accurate statement, Okay, because you're too emotional to listen to him or because it's a sore topic because maybe you like to say that you you couldn't have had kids but like actually you, you didn't really try because you didn't want them now you're it. whatever it may be clearly a sensitive topic if this is all it takes for you to like not vote for trump or to vote for biden like maybe you're not necessarily a far leftist radical progressive but you're not a conservative no so <laughs> we're supposed to understand that People who don't have kids because they don't want kids are actually lying about not wanting kids and are more miserable than people who do want kids but don't have them for whatever reason. Lauren, you should be smarter than this. This is so incredibly stupid. Who thought this was a good defense? I mean, sure, what else are you going to say? But this is painful. I'm not a political strategist by any means, but I really think it would have been better to just let it go instead of whatever else Lauren is trying to do in the rest of this video. So I just, I want to start this video off by saying I don't hate women, okay? I really don't. I know it may seem like I spend a disproportionate amount of my time on this channel talking about and yeah, kind of complaining about women. But you see, that is only because on this channel, 
we basically just talk about dumb political opinions. And similarly to how, you know, we know that certain demographics are overrepresented in things like, let's say, crime, and how, you know, just because if you're a reporter and you spend a lot of time talking about criminals who were Black, that doesn't mean that you hate Black people. As a content creator who covers politics, it's just, it's not my fault that women kind of seem to be disproportionately overrepresented in dumb political takes, okay? It's just, that that does not make me sexist. I'm a girl's girl. Basically, all of my interests, extremely feminine-coded. All my friends are women. I love women. It's just that when it comes specifically to politics, let's just say I think a lot of women are making some not great statements, okay? See, I can be diplomatic. That was supposed to be a disclaimer. But, okay, let's see how diplomatic Lauren is when defending JD. People are saying that JD Vance clearly just hates women, that it's this rhetoric from the right that is turning women liberal, that even conservative women are so offended they suddenly are going to become liberal because they certainly weren't liberal before, right? So there's a lot to unpack here. Almost all of it, if I'm being real, makes me frustrated with the women whose posts we're going to be looking at. Apparently one curse trend that this JD Vance trend has given us on social media is just women who are childless posting videos and photos of themselves like to show the world that they're happy. And obviously happiness is definitely discernible from a photo and video. It's not just an excuse for these women to post photos of themselves and get attention. No, they're making a political point. And so I guess the point here is to show that like she's owning the stereotype. She doesn't care. She's successful regardless of what JD Vance says. This just comes across as sad though. Like, I don't know, you're in your thirties, you're childless. You just have your cat in your apartment. Like, I'm sad for you. I, I, I don't know. Was the intended result something else aside from me feeling pity? And here's the thing. Like, obviously, these women are offended, but they don't actually have any good retort. So they're just, like, posting selfies. It's like, I've already made videos about how I feel about universal suffrage. We're not going to go down that route again. Just know, like, I'm thinking about it. But here's the thing. Obviously, liberal women were going to be mad at this clip because they're always mad. And so, of course, they're going to be mad at someone like J.D. Vance, who is conservative and a man, also white. I'm pretty sure that factor is in here. But what really gets me and what I don't understand are the women who maybe otherwise identify as conservative who are also kind of lending credence to the idea that, yeah, as women, like, we should be offended. This was bad for him to say. It's like, can you please just not default to the feminist left-wing factory settings for, like, 10 minutes so we can have an actual conversation here? Because, I mean, if women, by and large, are basing their political opinions off of who is nicest to them, we're in trouble. Like, you are making an argument as to why you shouldn't be able to vote. Because that, frankly, is just not a rational decision-making that someone who has control over their country's future is doing. That That, that is the decision-making of a child who will go to whoever has the most candy. Hey, maybe with your vote, you shouldn't just be thinking about who you like the most, but who will actually be the most effective leader, who has the best policies, who's going to handle the economy the best. Because guess what? Voting for president isn't the same thing as voting for like homecoming queen and king or whatever. Just please grow up, set aside your emotions for two minutes and see that he is right. My favorite part is when Lauren tried to insinuate that conservative women offended by JD's comments were actually liberal all along, but also decided those same women were just being too emotional and making a case for why women shouldn't vote. I would ask ask which is it because it can't be both, but it doesn't matter. Lauren doesn't want women to vote anyway. I'm not interested in Tradcon talking points, but I did find her conclusion... Yeah. Just know that the left actually hates you. Like, they're not just going to call you a miserable, childless woman or whatever it is. If you identify even just like as not even conservative, but just centrist, they will actively think of you as a fascist, a Nazi. They'll want you to lose your job, maybe be put in a camp. They'll cheer when, you know, one of your friends or family members dies at a Trump supporter rally. Like, if this was a game of who is crueler, then there is just no way you can seriously expect me to believe that, like, J.D. Vance's comments are the worst thing that you've seen. Leftists are going to get centrist and anyone right of center fired and potentially put in a camp? Does Lauren ever feel shame? Anyway, that was it. They really should have let it run its course, but a scroll through the comments shows that her audience is eating it up, so 
Well done. Honestly though, they would have been okay with his comments anyway. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.